Hey, hey, happy day. You know, knowledge, it's critical. Intel, you need information without information. You can't make decisions, certainly not good decisions. People, unfortunately, do make decisions based on information that isn't available to them or they haven't taken the time to look for it. George Washington in 1777 said this. It's a profound sentence. The necessity of pursuing and procuring good intelligence is apparent and needed not to be further urged. A different way to say it, but you get it. That's kind of what it is. Let me give another little example of a story that happened just the other day in Edmonton, Alberta. The government now in Canada has made everybody kind of like, I don't know, the Gestapo. Everybody uh, tells stories that everybody else is encouraged to do that. The government is saying, be a snitch and we'll give you anonymity and chop, chop, right? So there's a woman in Edmonton, she filed a complaint about the size of a Good Friday service and she says her privacy, though, was violated when Alberta Health Service inspector disclosed her identity to that church. You know, okay, but firstly, I don't agree with this uh, anonymous stuff. You're going to make a complaint and have an impact on somebody's life is your opinion, and it certainly needs to be told about who you are. An anonymous letter to the editor, that's bad stuff. I mean, nobody can even stand up to you, and it's terrible the government's allowed that to even happen. But anyway, back to the story. This woman reported 15 to 25 people are leaving the St. Thomas Church. I think you're only supposed to have... Uh, nine or something so the church says that's not true and and the uh, government said it's true you know you got to believe the person who complains the church said aha i'm not so fast because we streamed our service it was good friday and so it's on youtube look at it and they did and guess what there was eight people in the church they were legal, it was proper, and now this woman is mad. She's appalled, she says, because this uh, whole outfit, this whole design is for the purpose to protect me, to protect snitches like me. You're not supposed to have anybody, uh, they're not supposed to have a chance or an opportunity to kind of defend themselves, and that's bad. So now let's talk about me. So I'm on the Sunshine Coast in uh, British Columbia, and I was, uh, my 14 day, I was isolated because I came here from California, and I'm still here now. And on the 14th day of isolation, I thought, this is great. I'm on parole now. I've been sprung. And the very next day, which was uh, the 15th day, I got sick. And I got really sick. This was on Good Friday. And so I, I waited Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I didn't eat anything during that three-day period. And I was shaking, had the chills, and the, well, it really wasn't nice. So I had all the symptoms of this virus. However, I, I was breathing okay. I was gasping a lot, but I was kind of breathing. So I thought I better check into this. I better get tested because if I have it, I need to know not for me so much, but, but for other people and make sure that I'm not around them, right? So I called this hotline that they have in British Columbia, some hotline, <laughs> an hour being on hold. I hung up the next day, I tried again and tried again. I finally got through to a guy and I said, you sound either East Indian or something. And I said, I can't understand you. Are you a Canadian? And he says, I don't have to answer that. And I says, well, humor me. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm a Canadian and I'm sick here. And, and you're, what are you telling me? Well, I will assess you. And I had to have him repeat everything three or four times. So this is the Canadian healthcare system, right? So we get through that, and then he says, after the assessment, he says, go to a clinic. I said, I'm old and kind of not that dumb. I could have done that myself. I'm asking you where I can get tested. He says, well, you just can't walk in somewhere and get tested. And I said, well, aren't there test places? How do you shut a country down and not have test places? And you need to know what you're dealing with. You, you're short of information here. And he says, that's not how it works. He says, you go to a clinic and, and if they refer you or a doctor refers you, then of course you can go get tested. And a week later, sometimes two weeks, the test results will come back. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, I'll be cured or dead by then. <laughs> so that doesn't help me. So you're rolling along here without information. George Washington would be mad at you. So that's not very good. And, and so people across Canada are being impacted by this kind of stuff. And, and this, so how do you have information? So now let's go over to Dr. Teresa Tam. She's the movie star recently telling everybody to stay home and wash their hands. And she's a chief public health officer. Now, politics shouldn't come into health, but you know what, I, to me, 
your whole makeup, everything that you do during the course of a day is directed somewhat by your political behavior. And she's from communist China, I think. Nobody really knows where she's from. She's a Chinese um, person, a big deal. But maybe she's a great doctor. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, but she's telling me all this stuff and she doesn't have information. And she has a terrific uh, amount of power, right? She had the ability to close down an entire nation based on uh, bad stats. So maybe it should be closed down. Maybe it should be for a longer time because maybe there's a whole bunch of people like me that have it. I don't know if I have it. I kind of feel better today, so I kind of think I don't. But when she's working with numbers that are being computed or even entered into the system, right? So, so when you see that there's this many people who have the infection in Canada, is that a true number? No, it's not. Because firstly, they should have set up testing places. And we need a quarterback. We need somebody to inspire us. I just this morning, I'm so bored, kind of in my self-isolation again, that I watched a bunch of old shows of Winston Churchill, a bunch of his speeches. He led the nation. You know, he was a cheerleader, he was a quarterback, he was everything. Without him, the people wouldn't have gotten through it. Canadians, y'all don't have one of them. In any event, you know what, this woman, all of her friends are Marxists, and she's a communist, and the Prime Minister of Canada, he says that he likes China, he likes her dictatorship thing and all of that. So, so how does that roll into this? I mean, I don't know if it does. I kind of do. I don't know, just, it, it blah, blah, kind of makes me a little bit crazy. Then on top of all of this, this uh, tram woman, the doctor, what does she do here just recently? She <laughs> donated Canadian, Canadian, gover I don't even know if she's Canadian. Does she have a citizenship? Nobody seems to know. She certainly has a citizenship somewhere else in China, or she's a dual citizen, probably, because so many of these people are. Shouldn't we be managed by Canadians? Why are we being managed from people in other countries? United Nations, that's another true little thing. The United Nations now is effectively running our country. <sighs> Anyway, recently what she did is she made donations to China of masks, gloves, and protective gear. While at the same time, Canada is beginning to experience shortages of these very same materials. How's that for being fair? I mean, ah, not so much. Anyway, we'll see you soon. I'll be well and swell, and I think I might even start having a snack again soon. And then we'll uh, drill down here more as we go along. Happy day.